You ever bought a rig so big that you don't want to carry it to your crawl spot and when it breaks you don't want to carry it back? Well, I've got an SCX6 now. I'm only like a year late from everybody and today I'm going to do my initial review and tell you everything that I love and hate about it. Big thanks to RC Hobbies Orlando for supplying this vehicle. I paid full price for it, but they are some good buddies. They also are really knowledgeable in the business and they will ship anywhere, anywhere in the world that you want them to. So uh, they had this in stock. I always want to support shops that I know and trust and help me out with stuff. So I bought it from them and they shipped it from Orlando all the way up here to Missouri. Now, uh, let's just get down to the nitty gritty real fast. My son was driving it. I wanted to do, you know, an old unboxing, ooh, new rig sort of thing, but my, my son really wanted to drive it. So we went out on the rocks and within five minutes he broke the servo, which, you know, on an RTR rig, they're not gonna have the best quality servos uh, to begin with. So not really unexpected. Uh, what ended up happening was the output bearing on the servo just blew to smithereens. It's an extremely small, thin bearing. There's really no way that it would withstand much abuse from this rig. But he, he wasn't actually abusing it. Uh, he was driving it. He has extremely good low speed control at this point, And the wheels were turned and he just bumped the rock. Just perfectly so. And he told me, it's like, the throttle's real twitchy, Dad. It's not so smooth, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. He's used to my rigs. I tune all of my rigs with a good, you know, a generous amount of Expo. And I don't believe you can do that with the stock system. I'll have to get into that on tuning and see if we can. But uh, nonetheless, my son's complaint was that the throttle on this is pretty twitchy. And that's what caused him to bump the rock with the steering at more or less full lock and it just blew out the bearing. So uh, what I have for replacement already is a Reefs Beast 2000. This big mamma jamma along with the single HD horn set and the fifth scale screw kit. I'm gonna keep it 55th straight. That'll help us out for install. And I'm gonna be running this on 4S LiPo Direct. I do believe that this will work on 4S LiPo. I guess we will find out. I can always go back to 3S. This rig has plenty of speed. All right, we will get to that in another video. But for now, let's, let's just talk about this rig. So I love it and I hate it. I hate it a lot. Uh, there's a lot of little things on this that uh, is just frustrating one of them being the size and the weight another one that i really i like it and i dislike it at the same time is this body mount system so you've got two clips right here and it hinges back just like the old yeti xl and i don't have small hands guys i mean i don't i don't have large hands and it's a huge pain to like get your hand in here get the clips out there we go but what's even bigger pain is putting it back on i don't know what's up with this but if it doesn't sit just right i can't get these in i fumbled for five minutes trying to get this body back on and finally i punched it a couple of times out of frustration and then it it finally went through but something about the way that this body sits if you don't have it just perfect these clips won't go back in and one of the most frustrating things there we go well now it'll do it on camera but with my son i struggled and struggled and finally just threw the body clips in my pocket so there we go that's one of the other frustrations um the other thing that makes me both like and hate this is definitely the size of the rig if anything breaks on this you're carrying it back this is a 25 pound rig but it's also a big bulky rig um, so we have two choices. I can either make myself a toe strap to attach to my belt loop and literally drag this thing back to the car if it breaks on the trail, or I'm gonna have to have a complete repair kit. Uh, that it's, it's gotta include an extra servo. Uh, the servos for this guy aren't inexpensive for replacements. Yeah, sure, you can get you know a 50-ish dollar one on uh, Amazon or eBay probably like a DS servo or something like that and you're gonna end up breaking that thing again the first time you have any sort of tumble uh, so you would go with a more expensive one uh, so reefs I want to say that these are 
you're gonna have to help me in the comments. Uh, I don't remember like 400 bucks for this guy. Um, uh, you could go with something like a Shift RCs, which is gonna be about 250 bucks. I'm, I've got one in development right now for it, and we're probably also gonna be about the $250 range. So if you're thinking about this rig, if you still don't have one, you need to consider not only the cost of the rig, but the cost of replacement parts. Now, if I contacted Horizon or Axial about the broken servo, they would send me a new one, no questions asked, really fast, I'm sure. So my complaints about the servo breaking isn't so much like, wham, I paid all this money, which, yeah, it's 1100 bucks. These are quite expensive rigs. Uh, it, it's not so much that it broke and that, you know, you know, Horizon is going to stand behind it. So that's not the issue. It's more of, let's say I had a wife that managed the money for my toys with me. Let's, let's just give, give this as a what if situation. She probably wouldn't be too happy about me buying an $1,100 rig and then immediately needing a $250 server so that it didn't break every single time I went out on the trail. Because, like I said, any sort of little tumble, uh, even just a little blip, a uh, quarter throttle blip in first gear where your wheels turn the wrong way, you can break this thing a little too easily with a stock servo. So just something to keep in mind. You're probably going to need to spend... I know minimum 250 bucks. You're going to need a tool kit to carry with you on the trail. There's probably, you know, you probably need some new rod ends here and there just in case something breaks. Cause like I said, I don't want to carry this thing back. It is big enough that even a quarter mile hike is enough of a bummer that, mm, you know, I'm going to really be careful about when I take this out, where I take this out and what I want to carry with me. Cause if I don't feel like carrying a big bag of spare parts, then I'm not gonna take this rig wheeling, honestly. And so th this, this rig takes some careful consideration before you roll it down the hill and potentially maim somebody with it. Uh, it, it is big enough that if you try to catch it while it's rolling and you get a finger caught into the four links, it's gonna break your finger. It, it, it's a dangerous rig. Now, all right, I, I've complained about it enough. Let's talk about the good parts. So because of the heft, it drives very uniquely. You know, it, it's got really good suspension actuation. It's really fun to blast around in second gear. It's just fast enough. It's pretty hairy. Um, I really like the way that this handles. Driving this is a ton of fun. Now, it is a little more difficult to find hard stuff to drive on because of the size, but the driving experience of this is really, there's nothing else out there like this, uh, you know, because of the size, because of the weight, the suspension, the way that it reacts, having all of this heft, it's really cool. I really enjoy driving it. Uh, the stock electronics, the servo, yeah, it, it's not really powerful yet. Yeah, it breaks really easily. You can just imagine on any rock crawler that your stock servo is not going to be great. The low speed control on this system is actually really good. And this is, uh, you know, they call it a spectrum it looks like essentially a hobby wing. It's got the FOC on there, probably a four pole. I could take it apart and get more information about that for you. But uh, let's see, 1200 KV, good from two to four S, I do believe with your stock system. Um, I never had an issue with heat. 1200 KV is not really gonna stress an ESC very much. Um, maybe in second gear, you'd go for long periods of time in uh, with like a four S LiPo, you could. But, uh, you know, it seems to work pretty good. Low speed control, really good, but as my son stated, really twitchy. So um, I, I don't know if you can understand why he would say that, and it also has good low speed control, but the easiest way for me to explain is that your minimum speed is really low on here. It has a really good minimum speed, but the difference between minimum speed and let's say 10% cent speed is not very much on your throttle finger. So going from that really low creep to a, you know, a, a, a jerk to going a little faster, it does it almost too easily. So you know, some expo, I'll have to see if we can do some programming on this. Maybe there's a Bluetooth module. Uh, it looks like there is a Bluetooth module on the receiver. So more than likely you just do a little bit of research and we can probably just program this via Bluetooth and maybe we can make the throttle less sensitive. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you have done any of this yet. But that part seems good. We have a metal 
front uh, cast part of this transmission. That means that we're not going to have any issues with the, uh, you know, the pinion mesh. If you hit a bump in the motor flexes or anything like that, um, not going to be an issue. Plenty of room for an aftermarket motor in there. So uh, yeah, you can probably tell what I'm working on right now. And otherwise, I haven't had any problems with it. I have heard that shimming the ring and pinion is a good idea just to keep it from blowing out the ring and pinion on the rear, which, yeah, with a vehicle of this heft, if you get it up to an object and you're kind of whack, 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 that's probably going to break your ring and pinion. The same as almost any rig, but the heavier the rig is, the more likely that you are to break stuff. And this rig is heavy. They call it 25 pounds. It's closer to 26 pounds with a battery in it. So... Yeah, that, that's a, a start. I really like the lights that are on there. It, it's kind of kind of neat. A lot of rigs are coming with lights these days. Um, so yeah, I, it's a it's a love hate relationship for me right now. There we go. I'll have to replace the servo before I take it any further. So unfortunately, today we're not going to be able to take it out on the rocks and show you. But we will be able to do that soon enough. Soon enough, I say. All right, let's see. Is it going to do it on camera? Can I get it through? No. See, and I don't understand why this... Come on, get out of the way. This thing is frustrating. It's the one thing I don't like about it. Come on, there we go. Hey, it went in without five minutes of finagling. The other thing I don't really like is the on-off switch. It's right here. It's kind of difficult to get your hand in there if you've got bigger hands than me, which I don't have big hands. It, it's kind of a weird spot. And yeah, I, I really don't like that on off switch. It's out of the way enough that yeah, it probably won't get hit. Although it's really close to getting struck by the, the servo arm and the pan hard. Um, I can imagine it turning itself off. Let me know if y'all have heard of that having issues. Um, it does not seem far fetched at all. Lots of gear down though. Oh yeah, before I close. They hit the gear ratios really well, both first gear and second gear. First gear is just the right crawl with the KV of motor that they selected on the voltage range that you have available to you. And second gear is a nice wide range from first. So I didn't do the exact calculations, but I think it was somewhere around a 2 to 2.5 to 1 span between first gear and second gear. And in my opinion, ah, magnifique, just perfect, perfect separation between a low gear having great low speed control and just enough wheel speed to be able to bump up an object and then second speed being slightly ridiculous just enough speed to make it hairy just enough speed to make it a little bit of fun to blast around with this guy so yeah overall if i was going to give it uh, out of 10 stars i would probably give it somewhere around an eight uh, the reason why i wouldn't do 10 is it's kind of hard to get past my son driving smoothly, breaking the servo immediately. Now, like I said, they would they would give us support. I'm sure that we could warranty it and they would have us a replacement, you know, three to five days. We'd be back on the road or on the rocks. But it, it shouldn't have broken quite that fast with such a gentle tap. It, it was just, you know, maybe a bad situation and it kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth having that happen so fast right out of the gate. It's also hard to give 10 stars on a toy that costs $1,100. So I'd probably give it an eight star. Definitely gonna be a fun one for the stable, but I'm not getting more than one. Uh, it's just too big. It's gonna be too expensive to keep up. And I honestly don't want two of these on the trail at the same time and having one or both of them break potentially. So I guess one of these is gonna be the only thing that could tow another one. So maybe that's really the move, have a trailer and uh, put it on the backpack and when one breaks you throw it on the trailer and you tow it back with the remaining one so yeah there we go eight out of ten stars for me i'm gonna throw this on the floor uh, and forget about it for a couple of days yep good times though sex6 let me know in the comments what you think about them and what you think of my experience so far thanks for tuning in have a great day